Welcome to a little historic best of three, we'll call it an update video, with the, as of right now, fairly uh, new release, or information regarding the Historic Anthology 4. It'll add, like the article says, it'll add 25 new cards. Beginning March 11, you can purchase it for 4,000 gems or 25,000 gold. Pardon. I believe the 4,000 gems is something like 20 US dollars, which honestly is fine to get. For me, it's, I'll totally pay that, you know, provided I have the money and all that. I'll totally pay that to get, you know, a full play set of all the cards. I don't mind that. And we'll be have, what, like, basically a month, more or less, to do it. So, and, uh, so we, we'll have a good amount of time to get it. And I guess we'll just go through all the cards in question here. Uh, also, uh, pardon any sort of, uh, weird rambling nature. I wanted to get this video out fast, so I haven't really had time to collect the thoughts. Credit to Jeff, Ho to Jeff Hoagland's stream, where I saw him talk about this, and that's how I figured out that the uh, article was dropped uh, right away, so credit given where credit's due. Now, first card revealed, Triumphant Reckoning, 6-3 white for a sorcery, return all artifact enchantment planeswalker cards, or and planeswalker cards from your yard to the field. It's nice, it's fun, it's not good, but it's like... There's probably some, like, what-the-deck-style combo that's, like, lurking in here, which is fun. Uh, Declaration in Stone. One in a blue for a sorcery. Exile target creature and all other creatures. Controllers. Exile target creature and all other creatures. Its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. Uh, for people who don't know, if I remember correctly... Uh, when a player investigates, they make, like, a little clue artifact token that I think you can cash in for one mana and draw a card. It's either one or two mana and you draw a card. I, my, uh, loose memory of Innistrad block is spotty at best. I'm gonna mirror, uh, again, Jeff Hoagland's thoughts that this is a pretty good white removal spell. It's probably as balanced as we're gonna get, seeing how they believe that Path is too strong for the format. But I, I think Declaration of Stone is a very good white answer. Giving your opponent card draw for a Legion's End sort of style effect, very good. We'll likely see a fuckload of play in almost any white deck, really. Because at worst, it's just a two-mana remove one thing. Uh, its uh, floor is a two-mana remove a creature. And your opponent makes a clue, which is fine. Better to like get rid of a creature, the card draw is... The card draw is okay, because they also have to spend mana for it. It's not free. We also have Thraven Inspector. One mana, one, two, human soldier. Enters the battlefield, investigate, which is just make a clue token. Which, again, uh, artifact token, and you can, like, sack it for one or two mana to draw a card. It's fine. For, honestly, it's a really solid white little aggro card. And, uh... <laughs> depending on... I can see this going in some white weenie deck, which is... Hint, hint, the next deck that I might work on, or that I am working on, whether or not this deck, I don't think that this video will come out before then, of course, but I figured, hey, there's a little sneak peek of what the next video is. Next is, ooh, some graveyard shenanigans, for those of you up to no good. I like that. Think twice, one in a blue for draw a card, flashback for two in a blue. It's fine. I mean, it's better than a radical idea because you don't have to chuck a card from your hand, but sometimes that can be good. It's pretty good for um, a common. It's fine. It'll probably see some play, but I don't think it'll, like, dethrone. Like, we have a lot of two mana draw some cards. Hell, even Behold the Multiverse, if you foretell it, does air quotes better than this. Good card, not bad, nice middle of the road, nice three star card, you know. Not offensive at all. Spider spawning. Five and a green for a sorcery. We make a one-two spider creature token for each creature with reach. Or sorry, make a one-two green spider creature token for with reach for each creature token in your graveyard. That's what messed me up. And you can flash it back for six and a 
green or black? I think it's a black. I also, again, will echo Hoagland's, uh, 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 what's the word? Um, issues with, uh, the quality of the cards, but that's fine. Uh, I understand that they pull them from Arena just to show you that it's there. This card, it's not bad. It's fine. A good way to sort of, like, recover from a board wipe if you need to. Maybe some sort of spider token, spider <laughs> tribal. That could be kind of fun. If that happens to exist, I don't know if it does in the format. But it's not a bad card. It's fine. Uh, oh, Adorned Pouncer. One of the cards we didn't get in Amon Ket Remastered. But we're getting now. Two men and one one death strike. We can eternalize it for three and two white, which is exiling it from your yard to make a four four token of the card in question. It's fine. It's not gonna set the world on fire. Two mana one one double strikes almost never see play. The eternalize is nice. Maybe if you're running some sort of cat tribal or some Renan Seri, you know, cat and dog thing. Might see play, but eh, it's fine. It's not, again, like a good three-car star middle-of-the-road card. Uh, so, next will be... Oh, yeah, some of these kick-ass, uh, more snow uh, uh, permanents. We'll start with Iceberg Cancerix. Pardon the, uh, uh, the my pronunciation of the word. One in a blue for an 04 snow creature crab. Whenever another snow creature enters the battlefield under your control... Target opponent, or you may have target player, mill two cards. Nice mill, works well with the uh, rune crab, and the snow creature stuff is nice. I did just see uh, Saffron Olive's little snow tribal deck thing in modern video, so I actually weirdly had knowledge of what a Merit Lage's Slumber was. But for those of you who don't, one in a blue for a legendary snow permanent. When this card or another snow permanent enters your battle enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control ten or more snow permanents, you sack the slumber this card basically, and you create Merit Lage, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature with flying and destructible. Uh, if you want to run some really heavy, like honestly, maybe some Sultai Journey style. Um, snow deck, or even just really snow in general. Pretty good card, honestly. And because we got snow cards with call time, I imagine this will see some play. Ah, yes. One of the ones that I'm actually a little uh, excited for is we get one of the sword cycles. Sword of body in mind. Three mana artifact equipment. Uh, equipped creature gets plus 2-2 two, two protection from green and blue. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you make a 2-2 two, two wolf, and that token, and that player mills 10 cards. Apparently, according to people like, again, Jeff Hoagland, props given to the man, this is one of the weaker swords, and yeah, I see it. It's no Feast and Famine, or whatever, Fire and Ice sword, which I believe are the more played ones of the cycle. Uh, but this is honestly, I, th I think it's like a four-star card. I'm trying to make some sort of uh, I've been brewing a uh, like a Boros equipment tribal thing, and I see this being a nice little addition in here, or addition into that deck from here. Nice four star card. I see potential. Hell, it could just be a kick ass sideboard card if some Simic bullshit starts cropping up again. Goblin Gavalier. One mana, one one goblin warrior with trample, and it gets plus two uh, power for each equipment attached to it. Honestly, pretty good. I mean, it's not going to set the world on fire. Actually, pretty good. Has a home. Especially if some sort of, again, like I'm wanting some sort of Boros equipment tribal. You, you goblin gavaliers and whatever that um, red white dwarf dude who made the Tyrite sword from call time, whatever his name is, Cole, or whatever his name is, it'll go in that deck, it's fine, and we have a Bone Splitter, apparently this one actually sees a degree of play, this one's fine, honestly, it's it's really, really inoffensive, uh, one mana artifact equipment, for, and for one, or, er, one mana artifact equipment, Crypt Creature gets plus two, plus oh, and you equip for one, just rock solid, pretty good, if equipment sees play, it'll see play, or some sort of artifact kind of dealio. It might see some play. <laughs> Hell, playing a bone splitter and then animating it with, uh, whatever that blue, uh, uh, 
oops, uh, whatever that blue uh, animated creature or animated artifact guy is whose name escapes me. Not bad. Let's see. Torment. Oh, this. F I fucking hated this card during the beta. Ah, oh, this card was the worst. Torment of Scarabs. Three and a black. Enchantment. Or a curse. Enchanted player. At the beginning of the enchanted player's upkeep, that player loses three life unless they sack a non land or discard a card. This thing is fucking brutal. It's a great card. I hate it because it's good. But man, <laughs> it'll probably. If it sees as much play as it did during the beta of Arena, this son of a bitch will be really, really popular. Maybe some Demir control will again spawn from the ashes like it did a long time ago around Torment of Scarabs and the Scarab God himself, or itself, actually. Flame Blade Adept. One mana, one red mana for a Jackal Warrior with Menace. It's a 1-2, and whenever you cycle or discard a card, this card gets plus one power till the end of the turn. Good card. There's some... There's got to be some sort of cycle... I mean, there is a cycling deck. Or there was a cycling deck a long time ago. Uh, I could see this being the additional card they needed with your, like, 1-1 one, one get bigger fox thing and with this cycling or discarding. Or even one of my earlier videos with your, uh, like, an is it sort of uh, hollow one might be kind of good. Or like an arc liked Phoenix kind of thing. Might see some play. Pretty good card. Faith of the, of the Devoted. Two and a black for an enchantment whenever you cycle or discard a card, you pay one. If you do, target opponent loses two, you gain two. If cycling becomes popular, this will become popular. Or if cycling or discarding becomes popular, this will become popular. Or we'll see play in those decks, but never anywhere else. It's honestly, it's basically mechanic tribal support. Nothing but love for that. A couple of elves. We have Lys Alana Huntmaster, 2-2 two two green for 3-3 three three elf warrior. When you cast an elf spell, you can make a 1-1 one one green elf warrior creature token. It's fine. I mean, it's an uncommon, so it's like, if you're trying to play elves and you uh, don't have a whole lot of, uh, like, rares and wild, uh, rares and mythic rares, and you want to build, like, some uncommon level kind of uh, like elf tribal. It's pretty good. Uh, Abomination of Land of War. We're actually getting commander cards, which is fucking crazy and kind of cool. God, I love this format. One, a black and a green for a legendary elf horror. Has vigilance and menace, and its power and toughness are equal to the number of elves you control, plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. Again, I'm gonna. I agree with Jeff Hoagland's point that this will likely see more play. And again, if you want to look at a previous version of my Golgari Elf uh, Tribal deck, it will probably see more play because the Abomination can get hit by a Coco where the Hunt's Master cannot. But they both have their places, though I also do believe that this will see more play. If you're playing Golgari Elf, you'll play this. If you're playing like a non-black version, you might actually run this card. Some cool artifacts. We have Inspiring Sanctuary, or Statuary, sorry. Three mana artifact with non artifact spells you cast have improvise, which basically means um, non artifact spells. You can tap any artifacts you do have to pay for a colorless mana of the uh, mana cost in question. It's like Convoke, sort of, except you uh, have to use artifacts as a source. We have Cold Steel Heart, a two mana snow out of artifact where it enters the battlefield tapped. As it enters, choose a color, and you can tap it at one mana of the chosen color. If there's some, again, some cool snow deck, it'll be really popular. Uh, one of uh, Jeff Hoagland's points is that it's another two mana mana rock, so I'm sure, besides just being good generic fixing if you need it to be, it'll be good in snow decks if snow gets really popular. And snow stuff sees some fringe play, so they'll love this. But I really think Cold Steel Heart will be in your mono brown or mud decks are those you know colorless artifact decks kind of thing i think this is another two mana mana rock that the that deck will love a lot and what i saw and also what uh, mr hoagland pointed out was fucking blink moth nexus is crazy another creature land in the format is always good but blink moth nexus is a land you can tap to add a uh colorless mana 
For one mana, Blink Moth Nexus becomes a 1-1 one, one Blink Moth Artifact Creature with flying until the end of the turn, and it's still a land. For one mana, you can tap, and target Blink Moth gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Again, I'm just going to rip straight from him. One, I love that there's more creature lands in the format. So it's just nice to be able to, much like I, the reason that I love Faceless Haven, it's good to just sit on the card. So that's like a good thing. Uh, being able to like pump up your own Blink Moth on defense to make it a 2-2 flyer or other, or even to pump up other Blink Moth Nexus, Nex I, Nexus is, uh, on defense is nice. I think this card will see a but will see a buttload of play. Uh, I'm torn between uh, <laughs> my Faceless Haven and my Blink Moth Nexus. I love them both, though I'll probably play them uh, both a lot. I think this card's a fucking five star, absolutely killer. Uh, we have some more of the Ama or this is another Commander card, and this is another um, uh, Amon Ket block card that didn't get added in. Uh, Hamza, Guardian of the Arashian. Again, pardon. I think this is... One, this is gorgeous art, by the way. This has got to be like some Abzan... Like, actual Tarkir Abzan-like architecture. Because this looks fucking gorgeous. Anywho. Uh, for a green and a white for a legendary elf elephant warrior. That's 5-5. Five, five. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Creature spells you cast cost... Other creature spells cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. One, I'm sure that this will see play if some sort of green, white, plus one, plus one counter deck really emerges. This might be the card that it needed to become really, really good. It is one of those decks that, if you've ever noticed in the video, in my, <laughs> in my videos, that is sitting in the queue somewhere as I'm like building this bad boy. And I imagine historic brawl players will love another brawl. Uh, I don't know if this card sees a lot of commander play, but we don't talk about that necessarily. Although I do love me some commander, but that's another story. Good card. Yeah, it's basically mechanic tribal support, so I love that shit. Next is Amit Eternal, two and a black for oh this card, a zombie crocodile demon. That's a five five with a flick three. Which means that if it becomes blocked, it deals three damage. Or if it becomes blocked, it deals three damage to your opponent. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a minus one minus one counter on Amit Eternal. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, remove all one one counters from it. This card is cool, and it's not awful, but I feel like it's fighting for the same spot or a similar kind of vibe as like a rotting Regisaur is. I I. I, I mean, it's some, there's something here. I just don't know it yet myself. It's not bad. It's a nice middle-of-the-road card. It's not offensive. I mean, a 3-mana 5-5 five, five is not the worst. The fact that it can afflict somebody for 3 is nice that it gives it some reach. But we'll see. Now, another commander card is Sawtusk Demolisher. 4 and 2 green for a 6-6 six, six beast with trample. And you can mutate it for 3 and a green. When this creature mutates, destroy target, non-creature permanent. Its controller makes a 3-3 green beast token. Um, beast Within, I think, is the name of that card. That um, removal spell in green, which is fucking crazy. Uh, it, you'll, this might actually be strong enough to bring, like, mutate back up. Because it was once a fairly common occurrence to see some like mutate heavy decks, I could really see this card becoming really, really popular. If no other reason than like a sideboard card in a deck that just happens to run some more mutate creatures. So I think this card's really good. You'll see a lot of play, whether it's a main board all-star or a sideboard all-star shell, you know, yet to be seen, or is yet to be seen. Next is Harmless Offering. Two and a red for a sorcery. Target opponent gains control of a permanent you control. Oh, okay, so give your opponent something bad so I can enable some jank. Oh, this is, this is, oh, this is something, uh, <laughs> what the deck, all-star card. There's something screwy in here. Don't know what it is, but boy, I can't wait to find out. Oh, Collected Conjuring. Oh, right, I remember this card. Uh, again, also from Hope of Stream. 
two, a blue and a red for sorcery. Exile, top six cards of your library. You can cast up to two sorcery spells with a mana value three or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Put the exiled cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. It's collected companies, but for three cost and down sorcery spells. I think there's something here, but it will require some brewing and some tinkering in my head. Ah, yes. And the craziest fucking card of all. This motherfucker is crazy. Our, the last card is fucking Death's Shadow. It is an all... It's a great card. I think it is going to be great in this format. I love... I think this card has... like I, I love cards that are more aggressive. That will, like... Again, bring more aggressive decks, like, up a notch. And Death Shadow, I think, is going to be that card. Death Shadow is one black mana for a an avatar creature that's 1313 where it gets minus x minus x where x is your life total so you want to shock yourself you want to use deserts you want to use the uh zendikar bolt lands all the time and cast this bad boy it can be very it's i god i love this card so much but i believe that's the last card of the uh anthology list Thank you all. Uh, I will hopefully be able to, again, unless some crazy IRL <laughs> occurrence comes up, I'll, I will probably buy this one. And from now on, our next you know set will be... In our, our future videos, I always say it's a call time era card from until you know Strixhaven releases. We are now in the historic anthology... Or we will be, once this releases, in the historic anthology 4 era. So... I think that's all for this video. Can't wait to see you in the next one a few days from now. At minimum, the next video in a few days will be this little white weenies deck that I'm trying to brew up. I might do a little uh, variety gaming thing sometime, either between now and the white weenie video or after that. So if you want, you know, some weird little side project thing that I like to do from time to time, there's that. With that all out of the way, thank you all for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Sub if you like me. And if you want to talk about it and if you think, you know, X card is going to be great or X card is going to be garbage or, you know, that's what the comments are for. We can have a nice little conversation. Thank you all. Have a great day. And I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together.